Hi everyone, welcome back to How Stuff Works for our next episode on CNC design. Let you know that this video will be run in lapsed time to allow us to speed things along, otherwise it'll go for about an hour or more. So what we're going to do now is we're going to show you how we do tips and tricks on assembly. Okay, this one is to allow us to be able to place our components in position so that uh, we can adjust them without being finalized and then what we do is you can weld or lock everything in afterward once you've fine-tuned. Okay, so what we're doing here now is we're just placing our carriage blocks in position. Okay, uh, I'm using SolidWorks. Really, really nifty program, has lots of great tools. I highly recommend that you do use it when doing uh, any sort of engineering design. Okay, so what the uh, I'm doing on the software at the moment is using a nifty dimensioning tool that um, we'll go through in a moment and what it does is it allows you to mate the components uh, from specific edges and bases here, here and underneath here okay these ones are set at five millimeter spacings okay the reason for that is that you don't want to have them too close to the edges because the, obviously the closer you drill holes to the edges of a plate the weaker it gets okay so yeah in a moment uh, or sorry I should say later on in the video we'll flip to actually putting the holes in the y-axis plate so that everything when it comes time will line up and you'll be able to bolt everything together okay so the carriage blocks are being placed five millimeters in from the edges one uh, at the base where your lower rail of your y-axis rails will go one at the top which is 10 millimeters lower than what your y-axis gantry beams will be at the minimum okay so zipping through here okay okay so SolidWorks as I said has a really nifty little dimensioning tool Okay, that you can use on a on a 3D sketch. Okay, by selecting the relevant options in the uh, component placement and mating procedure, you can tell it how far you want it to go from any specific um, mating point. In this regards, I've gone from either left or right, and the bottom. Yes, I've worked off screen to calculate a few things out, but uh, which we didn't show. Okay, so here what we're doing now is we're just placing our RHS tubing, which will be what will be the y-axis uh, gantry beams. Okay, now simply placing the top and bottom y-axis beams. I'm not going to be placing in the middle beam, okay, that you can have as an optional extra, depending on your choice of linear mo motion gear. Okay, so some people will either choose to run ball and screws, other people will choose to run rack and pinion, and then some people will decide to do their other options such as chain, and sprockets, as well as timing belts. Okay, but in this instance, we're just going to be working on uh, basic placement of components later on when you come to design your own Y-axis plates, you'll place in the middle between these two, your choice of uh, motion gear and your place of bolt points for those components. Okay, previously off screen, uh, I'm now placing in the fixturing components for the RHS tube. In this regard, these four components here are some 29 by 20 uh, by 12, uh, sorry, by three millimeter uh, right angle. Uh, pieces All right, so made out of the exact same material as your RHS tube and your your plates All right, the reason you want to make sure you have the same material is simply because uh, some materials will react with others okay so SolidWorks once again has a really nifty tool that allows you to rotate parts to allow you to um, mate them with other uh, faces and other edges and vertices okay and what we'll do is when we come time as you can see I've pre-placed holes in these components okay we will align all our through holes 
that will go into all through all our other parts such as the y-axis plate and the the RHS tubing as well as through into the carriage blocks uh, later on down the line okay so I've got those in place We'll move on to the sides of the RHS tubing. Now, it's really important that you make sure that you secure um, on every face, okay? The reason for that is the securing method um, this way to ensure you don't get any axial twist or flex in your parts, okay? So these parts, once again, I've designed off, uh, off uh, video, all right? They are 59 by 20 by three millimeter right angle again. Okay, so out of the same material as the previous parts. Once again, I've already pre-placed holes here. Okay, once again, as I said, don't place your holes too close to edges. It uh, creates weak points in your fixturings. Okay, um, now what you'll notice is that, yes, well, I'm uh, running through the uh, the design aspect of these incredibly fast okay for you all right the the main point of this video is to get to the way that we fixture the components together okay we'll slow these down but I just wanted to show you just how we have gone from doing our 2d drawing that we took up in the last episode um, and applying it to a 3D positioning. So then what you can do is you can um, place all your holes, your marker points and things like that and fixturings so that when you come time to manufacture your plates and your other components, the files that you will either one hand tap, hand drill if you're very incredibly confident or you'll take to a workshop where they will have access to equipment such as a water jet cutter uh, CNC machines they can produce those parts and plates for you uh, accurately to exactly your drawings which uh, evidently most uh, production systems will support a DXF file um, I will try and place a DXF um, file uh, available to you uh, so that you can possibly if you want to take edit and modify or just use for your own personal use um, okay so what the video is doing here at the moment is it's showing you the um, the drill hole program okay so you'll notice that uh, I've gone through I've selected the whole wizard in SolidWorks okay what you need to do is you need to make sure you choose the correct hole type that you want in this regard what we're going to do is we're using a slot hole Make sure you choose your relevant um, metric or imperial sizes. What you want, the next tab down below that is the type of uh, drill hole that you want. There's dowel holes, drill sizes, etc. Okay, and then the below that um, is the type of size and size of holes that you want. You need to specify. Okay, so. In this regard, as I said, we're using slot holes. Okay, um, what I've done there is I've uh, made the drawing transparent so I can see the holes as you can see behind the plate. Okay, in this regard, I'm placing slot holes. So, what uh, it will do is when you come to place your components, okay, you can adjust up and down for level. Okay. Sometimes in the manufacturing process of plates, they can be a millimeter out, they can be slightly off, okay? You could even, when you design your workbench, such as what we've done before, or I've shown you before, your construction on your, your table may not be perfectly level, okay? So little tips and tricks like this, like these slot holes will allow you to make adjustment, okay? And then what you do is, once you've made the adjustment, such as this here, all right, I've turned the slot holes vertical instead of horizontal, which allows you to move the final RHS tube up and down slightly to where you want it. And what you'll do is, once you have completed the final adjustments, got a, your components as level as you possibly and as square as you possibly can make it, okay, you can either one, leave the components just bolted together, okay, not really recommended when it comes to CNC machining 
This has many reasons. One is that the, the forces placed on your machine, vibration, um, general torque and other um, factors okay, can make bolts vibrate loose which will then um, make movement on your components okay so what the what I'm trying to say here is that once you've got level okay depending on the material you've made your rig out of okay in this regard we'd be using aluminium okay you can um, braze the components um, shut okay or, or weld them shut with aluminium welding or if you're using steel you can weld or tack weld the components together Okay, so what you're looking at now on the video is the hole placements for your carriage blocks. Now, you'll notice that I'm only placing two slot holes, okay, on each carriage block. You're probably wondering why I'm not placing four, okay. Now, the reason for that is these carriage blocks is important that um, Many, as I said before, machine shops can make errors in the uh, layout of your your plan. Okay, the part may move on the on the machining process. God forbid. Hopefully, it doesn't. Okay, um, but what happens here is you want to be able to ensure that your bolts will go through into your carriage box smoothly. Okay, the two slot holes at the top will allow you a little bit of movement room on where your bolt sits okay because by putting um, bolts or forcing the bolts through holes into your carriage box will cause your carriage box to come out of alignment okay and the, that's one very important thing is you don't want that okay end of story okay um, so yeah only one set of those is adjustable all right, but it's not for adjustment purposes um, when we come time to do the x-axis plates all right we will take the um, position of those carriage blocks okay and then what we'll do is we will um, transition and translate the position of those directly across hard mating them up and then position the holes for your production side straight off those linkages okay but that's on the next episode why x-axis is on the next episode all right so as you see in the drawing now all i'm doing is placing through holes directly into the rhs tubing these are direct hard bolted no adjustment necessary on these ones okay very simple okay i have made an error in the object choice um, in the holes okay um, had a little bit of a problem with the software kept coming up with um, a solid works error okay um, i had to play choose a solid through hole uh, on the y-axis up and down okay what it did was it ended up punching holes into my carriage through my carriage box not that that will actually come out in the end physically but it sort of does does make it a little bit uh, of a challenge but um, as you can see there, it's putting holes through the components. There you go. As you can see there, they are right through my carriage blocks. Don't want those. Okay. <laughs> um, so we'll try again. Okay. Uh, pretty simple. Very, very easy. Okay. So once we've got all our holes in place, what we want to do is, okay, we can take that. All right, yeah, once again, here we are. This is me trying to place it, but then at that moment, that's when SolidWorks crashed. Okay, so I've um, cut, edited, edited my components. All right, I sort of eventually gave up on it and just went with it. Okay, but this gives you uh, a very solid idea of what it is you want to be doing. Okay, all right. So the important, the tips and tricks are in regards to this video is those slot holes okay using those slot holes allows you a lot of free movement allows you a lot of um, option in regards to your uh, your placement of your components right, i highly recommend them okay um, and then moving on from there as i said you can um, finalize your securing whether that be through welding um, etc other options
Okay, so given that, we'll wrap this video up here very, very simply. If you have any questions, please leave comments below, all right? I'm um, asking any questions in regards to how I did things, okay? SolidWorks can be quite a complex program, okay? And uh, yeah, we'll go on from there. All right, so everyone, thanks for watching. If you like the video, please uh, comment, like, subscribe, and share. Um, and keep tuned in for the next episode, which is on our x-axis gantry plates. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Bye.